Dad's Mr. Popular at the JCPenney Father's Day Sale. From tees and tech to fragrance and fitness, find cool gifts for every kind of dad. Surprise him with an iTouch Active smartwatch, now $29.99. Score major savings with doorbusters like St. John's Bay Polos, just $7.99, and shorts, $16.99. Plus, shop extended store hours Friday and Saturday. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Offers valid on select styles through $6.19. Some exclusions apply. Doorbusters and smartwatch excluded from coupons. See store or jcp.com for details. Target has laundry day covered because they offer a great selection of concentrated Tide Pods to help with all your laundry needs. Tide Pods clean, freshen, and help rejuvenate your clothes with odor fighters and stain removers. Did you know Tide Pods clean better than the leading liquid bargain detergent? Tide Pods are powerful enough to make your whites white and your brights bright, even in cold water. Just toss in one Tide Pod for small loads, two for medium, three for large. It's that easy. For great value and convenient pickup options, get Tide Pods today at Target. show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. This is uh, the 842nd time that I have started this. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I hope you are doing okay. I hope that the day has started out nicely for you. Um, Yeah, here we go. My gosh. This show happens each and every weekday in the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. Baldwin Ace Hardware, a beacon of DIY awesomeness in the Northland. God bless them. I got to make sure I got all my dogs in here. Yes, I do. I do. I appreciate uh, O'Neal helping me clean up the dog poo in the yard yesterday. He was all about it. Oh, uh, my God. Ugh. Fuck, come on. You see, when I can take the dogs out, um, on a walk, on a normal walk, then they go ahead and they do their business on the neighbor's property, which I immediately clean up, which I'm, I'm kind of always a little bit, I feel a little bit bad about that because even though, you know, I'm cleaning it up, my dog's still crapping on their property, you know? And I'm just waiting for one day someone to say, Hey, you know, please. And then I'm going to have to say, well, I, I, I'm cleaning it up. And they're going to say, yeah, I know. But still, there's always just a little bit of juice that, I mean, if I, if I, uh, if my neighbor, if their dog is crapping on my lawn and they clean it up, I still might be annoyed, you know, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but uh, typically though, that's, that's the way it goes. But we can't, we haven't been able to go for a walk because it's just too damn hot. You know, you don't want to do that to your puppy dog. Uh, just, you know, would, would hurt them, especially Bruce. Oh, my God, if it's 61 degrees or, or above, it's it's too hot for him. So enough of that. So that means that they, uh, okay, uh, they, they they do it in the yard. And then uh, Brick and O'Neill helps me clean it up because I don't clean it up because I'm a dumbass. And there we go. And then for a period of time, I don't love O'Neill anymore. And uh, that's just the way it is. I just realized the air conditioning is not on in this room. And we must have it on. Don't move. Do not move. I'll be back in like 15 seconds. I'm not sure what the heat index was around here yesterday. And it's going to be a little bit cooler today. But, um, you know, pretty sure the temperature was like 95 degrees or about that and the humidity was very high so you know it was like a fucking blast furnace it was oppressive warmest i ever felt was 113 in utah in the desert and uh but death valley that's something uh, furnace creek that's something i think you you have to like experience i think people go to that part of the country just to get out of the car and feel 130 degrees. Ugh. That's the type of place, I've talked about this recently, that if your car breaks down, you're going to die. No thanks. Hottest place on the planet. Death Valley, right here in the good old U.S. of A. We're number one. 
Uh, I think the reason why that is is because the way the mountains are and there's like, it just, it just, it channels a wind tunnel of, of hellfire that just rains down. Oh my God. That's where the gas is like nine or 10 bucks a gallon. Uh, the news today is the interest rate uh, went up three quarters of a percentage point. Now, some of you might shrug at that. Oh, what does that even mean? Well, okay. If you have a balance on your credit card, um, more of the money that you pay each month is going to go towards the interest rather than the principal. So there's that. And then there's, uh, okay, you want a car loan. Well, now you're going to be paying more over the long term of that payment for the interest. And if you, okay, a home. I just talked to a friend of mine who sells homes. His name is Neil. And uh, he's a, he's an old timer at the YMCA. I go, all right, what? Talk to me. What's going on? He goes, well, uh, one year ago, if so and so wanted to buy a four hundred thousand dollar house, they were going to pay, uh, let's just say nineteen hundred dollars a month for that house. Today, it's twenty four hundred dollars a month for the same house. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. I go, so that's uh, reducing the demand. He goes, oh yeah. Big time. I go, is that going to drop the cost of the houses? And he goes, no, no, it won't. Now I think he knows what he's talking about. Seem to know what he's talking about, but all right. Yeah. We got kind of a weird, uh, weird scenario here. No doubt. And the, the idea here is, is that it's going to, um, Lower this inflation, which is is the most ridiculous it's been since 1981. Um, inflation rate. Now, uh, back when Jimmy Carter was president, a mortgage, you could get a mortgage, well, you would get a mortgage for upwards of 20% interest. Think about that. 20% on your mortgage. Right now, you know, uh, you're looking at about four or five. So that's just outrageous. 20% interest on a mortgage. Holy shit. Now, the the idea is that this is what will is what uh, the economy needs to to slow down the rate of inflation. But it, they're hoping it does. They hope it does. It could lead the country into a full-on recession. And you know what happens after recession? Depression. Oh, no, we're fucked. Oh, fuck. And I don't I don't know anything about anything. So, And even if it does go into a recession, eh, you know, it's, I don't know. There are bigger things to worry about. Uh... Like my sister-in-law, Jesus Christ, man, my God. I think we have a scenario where somebody didn't uh, get the recommended, uh, uh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm probably putting the cart in front of the horse here, but I'm going to go out on a limb. Uh, regular Mike and the whole regular Mike family, they don't strike me as the, uh, you know, preventative doctor maintenance. You know, you have a, do you know anybody like that? Especially ladies, you know, with, with the uh, yearly mammogram. That, that to me, is like the most important thing that any person can do, man or woman, concerning their health is the mammogram. Uh, if, you, if you don't get the mammogram every year, the doc does not get a uh, look inside of that tissue where these little fibroids can pop up in there, which can very easily become cancer. And when they're just a little fucking thing, they can go and, uh, and 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 take care of them in a in a in a non well not that invasive way at all. And if after the biopsy comes back that it is cancerous, it's a, uh, a unremarkable amount of um, procedure to uh, to get that out of you. But when you sidestep the mammogram, uh, you know for that long. 
about the time that they figure out there's something wrong, you've got three tits, uh, two normal ones, and one tumor that's the size of a grapefruit. And, uh, you know, it's spread throughout your to your liver and pancreas. And uh, you're dead. Uh, so probably a fair idea to uh, put on your big girl pants and um, get your mammogram. Uh, but uh, when it comes to my uh, extended family, my uh, dear brother Michael and his significant other, uh, Sherry, I I just think that there's been some ball dropping on the uh, uh, medical checkups. Pretty damn sure there's never been a colonoscopy anywhere there. So, you know, um, I think uh, we had might have had some self-diagnosis. Oh, yeah, I got acid indigestion when, in fact, it was, uh, you know, cancer. Uh, poor thing had to have uh, emergency uh, uh, surgery and uh, recovering now from that. But holy shit, go to the doctor, for God's sake. Don't mess around with that, you know. Uh, your old pal, Eric Zane, we have a scheduled colonoscopy July 1. If it hadn't been for the uh, uh, kidney donation, uh, that would be the first time that I would ever have been under sedation. I've never, uh, outside of the kidney thing, I, uh, that was that was a first. That was a treat in itself. Um, from my experience, when I was in, I had no idea what I was in for when it came to the sedation. But when I was laying there and then the physician comes in with a form for me to sign and they've got a video camera on me and they said, now we need to make sure that you're before we put you under or start to give you sedation that you do want to do this. This is your last opportunity to sidestep this operation. Do you still want to donate your kidney? Now, if I said no, it's off. I just take the IV out and walk out of the hospital. And that has actually happened to people, which is shocking. Can you imagine being the poor son of a bitch who thinks he or she is about to get a kidney? And then, uh, oh shit, hang on. That sun is killing me. Hold on. Sorry. Don't go anywhere. All sorts of stupid interruptions today. My apologies. Eh, sometimes it happens. I'm alone. Um, <laughs> being that um, that freaking uh, doctor. Is, oh, wait a minute. You don't you don't want the procedure now? Uh, no, no. I I I don't want to do it. I mean, that has actually occurred. It'd be so terrible if you're the if you're the recipient thinking you're getting you're about to get a life saving kidney, and then oh no, my God. Um, so I said, yeah, of course, of course, just sign the thing. And then they go, all right. And then the, 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 the guy who came in, who's giving the, um, um, medicine to make me drunk or whatever. Uh, we, we start a conversation and, uh, it, it, it's revealed. He goes, oh, um, he goes, yeah, it's, it's a feeling like, uh, like you're intoxicated. The, uh, first round of sedation. I go, oh boy, it's been a while though. I don't, I barely remember what that's like. And he goes, oh yeah. And then. Uh, I go, yeah. And he goes, you a friend of Bill W. And I go, well, yeah. And he goes, oh, good. So am I. I go, holy shit. Now, for those of you who don't know, that's uh, that's uh, shorthand for raging alcoholic. So I go, yes. And uh, so then we goes, he goes, how long? I go, uh, he goes, yeah, for me, uh, uh, eight years. I go, oh, uh, 25. He goes, holy shit, 25. My God. I go, yeah, yeah, it just, it just wasn't working. You know, we had a like, little conversation. All right, well, uh, anyway, uh, here you go. And he, he puts it in the IV. And I, the amount, the, the speed at which the intoxication took place, it was, wow, was that fantastic. And I remember looking at the uh, curtains in the room. They were, they were blue, and they had kind of like a pattern on them. They immediately started to move. It immediately started to move. The pattern did like, like, like rainfall. And I went, whoa, <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Holy shit. 
So then they uh, wheel me out, and Jeffrey's in the room next to me, and we got our little bonnets on. I go, motherfucker, yeah. I didn't swear. I said, hey, Jeffrey, how you doing? Yeah, what, a, what a day. Oh, my God, this is so awesome. And they're like, yeah, okay, settle down, man. Come on. And that's about it. So colonoscopy on uh, Friday, July 1. I will not be here on that day, and then I'm taking about a week off after that. Um, how did I get on this? Okay. I was talking about my, uh, sister-in-law. I, that's something that's not an, it's important to have that colonoscopy because they're looking at these little pockets of your, uh, of your, of your colon to make sure that nothing is inflamed that can become cancerous. These little, uh, uh, what the hell are they called? Polyps. Polyps are the problem. And they just zap those off with the laser. It's no big deal. They can take care of it right there in a lot of cases. Uh, it's like the, the camera has got like a laser on it, I think, that can uh, that can do that. So, Jesus. Um, all right. So, I hope she, I think she's getting ready to go home. But then we're looking at, you know, chemotherapy, which is a bitch. This is very, very difficult. So, uh, uh, Godspeed to my uh, beloved sister-in-law. All right. So, welcome in, man. I appreciate you guys being here um, from the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. If you ever need to reach me about anything, send me an email on the Shoreliners Striping Inbox. Eric at ericzaneshow.com. All right. Uh, just a quick stop down. Um, I I made this available on Patreon yesterday. It was uh, just a note. No big deal. Uh, but I, I published it. And I should probably read it here, too. Um, I had been wrestling with this uh, with this idea uh, about what I should do and if I should make it, like, out there. Um and then I was kind of, cause I didn't really want it to become a discussion or a distraction or anything like that. But I don't know now, now that I've wrapped my mind around it, I should probably just, uh, in addition to making it known on Patreon, make it known here. It's not, it's, this is not a huge deal, but, um, you know, from the beginning, the onset of this podcast to where I am now, there have been times where most of the time I've, um, uh, had moments where I've interacted with you directly. Like I will read the comments and uh, engage you on that level. Um, that start has become uh, more of a struggle for me. It's It's been, become more and more difficult for me to pull that off effectively and still be able to uh, stay focused on what I'm doing here, which is, you know, storytelling and uh, keeping my thoughts together and uh, trying to progress the show in an important uh, in in the in a certain particular manner that is comfortable for me, um, and I, I found that it's become harder and harder. Not only has it become harder and harder, but um, you know uh, sometimes things uh, get taken the wrong way, and then that ends up becoming uh, a problem. There there have been problems that have occurred with people in the past. Um, that I, I, I don't want any part of anymore. And so, um, there, at first I was like, well, maybe I should, uh, I don't know, make it so the comments can't be there. No, you can't do that. These people like to talk to each other. Maybe I should, um, um, I don't know, do this or do that or have some type of, but it, it it's all very messy to do something like that. So the best thing is leave everything alone and just uh, do your show and do your show only. That's what I had decided. Now, um, when I didn't, you know, with the amount of conversation that I had one-on-one -on -one with people on there, um, now I started to see that people were unhappy that, uh, just a handful of people were, were unhappy that I was no longer speaking directly to the comments. So I wrote this, uh, just a note to thank you all for the continued support of the show. I know the lack of direct interaction during live streams hasn't been received well by a few audience members specifically. I've been, I've avoided reading the comments on the show. I see them, but I rarely acknowledge them. 
Uh, This is not because I do not like anyone, but rather to keep my focus on the task at hand. Essentially, I'm serving two masters if I try to engage one-on-one with commenters while trying to do my main job of keeping the content moving. Since I am by myself, I don't have the ability to filter what I don't need to get to a worthwhile comment. Uh, I've had some success in the past doing this, but have lately struggled. I hope you understand how it is on my end. I also hope nobody is offended with the direction. I still try very hard to make you laugh with the absurd things going on in my life and my take on the stories that I cover. Thanks again for the support over the years. I'll continue to work very hard to engage and entertain you. Please don't be strangers. I always welcome comments on email or attached to something like this. So that's it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that that was out there now fully um, on all of the ways that I communicate with you so that you had an idea what's going on. I didn't want you to get the wrong impression that I was uh, hating on anyone. I would never dream of doing something like that. So thank you. Thank you for the uh, stop down moment where I kind of have to break down that wall and tell you. Now, back to the fun. Excuse me, I need water. Okay. I don't even like doing that. That's too much of a distraction. All right. I don't have in front of me right now the Benny the One-Eyed Wonder Dog uh, song. I wish I did. I don't know where it is. I have to go back. I I don't know if Pellerito has the ability to access the Benny the One-Eyed Wonder Dog song, but I should probably get that. And the reason why I should probably get that is, you know, for moments like this. Um, My God. Yesterday, something happened at the household. I'll just I'll just get right to the big part of the story and then work my way back to other parts of it. So, you know, Uh, Benny, the one eyed wonder dog murdered one of Schimmel's chickens yesterday. I'm not even joking. I was seated right here. Diana comes walking in and she goes, some redneck just came by here with Benny. I go, our dog, Benny. Yeah. Apparently he got out. God, what the fuck are you talking about? And uh, now, I hadn't uh, I hadn't let Benny out once today, uh, yesterday. So I go, well, uh, that does happen from time to time. So obviously, that happened again. Benny wandered over to Schimmel's house. And thought that one of the chickens was one of his babies because he's got these uh, these stuffed ducks, and um, started to in, like grabbed it, and the thing freaked out and was badly hurt. The chicken was badly hurt. Schimmel comes running over. He goes, "What the fuck are you doing?" And then Benny drops the chicken, and then he goes, "I think I know whose dog you are." And then he, uh, you know, Benny is uh, is a very timid dog it's that's why this was so shocking that benny would do something like this and he immediately i mean shimmel said get in the truck and benny got in the truck shimmel uh drove around the block and uh walked benny into the hot into the under the door and, and knocked and then diana sees him and she doesn't know who the guy is so she comes up and says yeah some hillbilly just dropped off uh benny and says that he killed a chicken i go so many questions here. What the fuck? Who was it? She goes, I don't know. I go, was it Schimmel? She goes, no, he didn't have teeth. I go, well, that sounds like Schimmel. <laughs> I go, uh, burly guy. Uh, looks like he'd, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, be part of the insurrection. He'd be, he'd be running. He'd be hand in hand with Ryan Kelly in, uh, trying to overthrow the, like, yeah, that, that, that's what he looked like. I go, well, that's Schimmel. That, that is without a doubt Schimmel. He's the only guy for miles around that looks like that. I go barrel chested. Oh yeah. This is Jim's old ball coach. I go, all right. And uh I guess he said to Diana, I don't want to start anything, but I mean, 
my grandkids were there. He saw, they saw your dog doing that. And I'm like, and uh, you know, you might wait. Hey, when I was uh, back in my day, he's giving her the old back in my day. Shim, Schimmel's dropping back in my day. Back in my day, you know, I'd have gotten out my rifle and shot the dog. I'm not trying to start anything. I'm like, Schimmel, what the fuck are you saying that for? What do you got to drop that on her? On her? I mean, Jesus. And she's, Diana's like all confused. She doesn't know what's going on. There's Schimmel uh, 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 dropping that. Uh, dog, dog comes in the house and Diana's like, wait, what the fuck? So I go over there and they're they're having a pool party with it's what he said to grandkids. He's got his kid there, his his uh, daughter in law, daughters in law, and uh, I go Shimmel, how are you? He goes not not bad. I go did I, did I hear right? Benny murdered a chicken. He goes well, he got a hold of it. It's it's I'm gonna kill it tonight. I go you can, I go what the fuck? Are you you're what do you mean you're gonna kill it tonight? Well, first of all. Why are we waiting to kill it? If if the thing is badly hurt, is it walking around right now with like one leg and, and one wing and you're just here having a pool party? Uh, if it is suffering, you should probably go put it out of its misery or something. Ah, I'm going to do it later on. Like, well, how long does it take to kill a chicken, Jim? What the fuck? And uh, I go, well, Jesus, dude, I uh, I, I don't know what to say. I, I I'm... I can't believe it. Um, and he goes, well, I asked them. I go, no, 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 that's a figure of speech. I mean, I believe it. It's just that it's, you know, so, I mean, he is a pussy. This dog is it does, is, is a real wimp. So my only thing is I, I think he might have thought it was a toy um, or one of his babies or something. And uh, so I said to Shimmel, I go, I said to Mrs. Shimmel, I go, how much does the chicken cost? She goes, seven cents. I go, seven cents? What the fuck? Are you serious? She goes, yeah, they're cheap. Chickens are cheap. Go, Unless she was kidding. I don't know. I don't know how these hillbillies live. These are the type of people who, you know, they, they could live. Uh, well, they're, they, they're retired. They, but they could live off the land. These are very hardy people. And uh, I go, well, is this the type of thing, Schimmel? Now I'm like fascinated. I go, so when you're hungry, do you just go kill a chicken and then you like eat it? Is that, you, you just go get a fresh one? That just sounds like exhausting to me. I I, I tell you what, I would not be able to do that. I, I, I can, uh, I can, I can scrub a man's asshole, uh, my brother-in-law, which is probably something that he wouldn't be able to do. But there's no way I could go and just start killing chickens. But apparently, um, so I go, well, Schimmel, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, that, that is just horrible that that happened. Uh, didn't mean it. I don't worry about it. No big deal. I go, okay, buddy. So then I got the hell out of there. But yeah, Benny killed a fucking chicken. Incredible. Man. All right, so there you go. That's uh, that's how we started out. That's how we ended yesterday and how I'm starting today. Now, this show, as uh, each and every day, you can follow it. You can watch it on uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. And uh, I want you to do that if you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube because I am about to say goodbye to you. Thank you so much. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live if you want the full show. And wherever you download podcasts, Okay, you can catch the show, the audio podcast. Just search Eric Zane Show podcast. All right. They've now left us. Twitch, Facebook, brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV, where I just had a conversation with Megan uh, just yesterday. The car show to benefit CASA, which is a amazing charitable organization that I'll be telling you more about in the weeks to come. But the Irvine's car show is coming up on, let's see, August 25. That is a Thursday. That's part of the uh, dream cruise or whatever the hell it's called. Metro cruise on 28th street. All right. Yes. Restream to, Bring in Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and then say goodbye to them. Quite simple. 
I'll tell you how to do that, Corey. Reach out to me. Uh, all right. So, yes, thank you to my friends at uh, Irvine's for sponsoring Facebook and uh, Twitter. Blue Frost IT brings you Twitter, and uh, Frank Fuss brings you the YouTube channel. Okay, I want to get into the latest concerning fucking Bruce. If you if you are just listening to the audio podcast, Bruce lay, uh, lays flat on his back with four paws in the air. Is I don't even know how that's comfortable, man. Jesus, you are absolutely a hilarious dog. Look at him. Uh, yesterday, the cop who shot the black dude in the back of the head, Patrick Lyoya, is the is the dead guy. The cop is Chris Sure. Uh, Chris Sure fired yesterday. That is weird to me. I don't. I I'm I'm a little surprised at that. I mean, I know he's charged with second degree murder, but. My question is, what if he, what if he's innocent? Aren't you opening yourself up to some degree of, um, uh, legal issues? If you're the police department or the city and you fire someone and they are in fact not guilty, I don't know. Um, if you put the person on leave until they sort out their legal issues, wouldn't that be a good idea? But what do I know? I'm just an idiot podcaster. Um, but here's uh, here's how it unfolded yesterday. Since a Grand Rapids police officer shot and killed Patrick Leoya, that officer has now been fired. Christopher Shore, who's charged with second-degree murder in Loyoya's death, has been on administrative leave. News 8's Byron Tollefson joins us now with more on the city's decision to let Shore go. After the news was announced that Christopher Schur was fired from Grand Rapids Police, the attorneys representing the Leoya family told us news of their own. The attorneys representing Patrick Leoya's family are preparing a... That's uh, Ben Crump, of course, very famous civil rights lawyer. And then the other one is Ven Johnson. He's the local guy. Now, uh, Ven Johnson is Saul Goodman to the core. Uh, even so much in, in like, uh, the background behind him. And you'll see what I mean, because, you know, if you've ever watched better call Saul, he's got like the scales of justice behind him and shit like that. Ven is like that too. Civil lawsuit against the city of Grand Rapids and Christopher Schur. There's no question that, uh, unfortunately that city. Ven is in front of a giant fist that says fist of a champion. He hasn't stepped up and uh, and said that they're responsible for what happened and taking care of it. Attorney Ben Johnson expects to file the civil suit within the next few months. Also Wednesday, city manager Mark Washington. So I, I'm not sure he's suing the city or the or the police force. Washington announced that sure has been fired from the police department. That termination was effective June 10th. Sure had been on paid administrative leave up until he was charged with the murder of Leoya. He was suspended that day. So remember now, he has been receiving City of Grand Rapids money from the taxpayers, you're welcome, right? For the last two months and four days or up until the time the decision was made. In essence, what they did is they did nothing. It is so wait, are you just saying, I mean, at the time he hadn't been charged, okay? Um, so I, I, I think that what they did was appropriate at that point leading up to the charge. And then the charge came down and now they've, fired him and, and I, don't, I don't think that's appropriate either this standard protocol for the city to put an officer on administrative leave well waiting for a decision on charges still johnson says sure should have been fired when police had video of the shooting they have an obligation to fire employees who don't follow their rules okay first of all you don't know about the protocol for shooting that guy and that's what's going to be discussed in the case what he may, what he did, may have well been um, 
uh, by the book. And we don't know that until we get to the intricacies of the case. But Ven is like, oh, yeah. He, we all know that everything there was wrong. So we must, we, he should have been fired immediately. You don't know that. That's why we have cases, you asshole. And clearly an officer shooting and killing somebody in the back of the head who's unarmed isn't following their policies and procedures. They knew that the day of the shooting. Ven is a talker. He's charismatic. He's a lawyer. You know, that's, that's what lawyers do. They emphatically make points that may not be based on any fact whatsoever. Kind of like me doing the show. Washington had no further comment citing the criminal case and the potential for civil litigation. A police spokesperson said Chief Winstrom could not comment for the same reasons. The office of Christopher Schur's attorney, Matthew Borgala, also had no comment. Meanwhile, the criminal case against Schur is moving forward. He is due back in court June 21st. I would think that there could be a trial date by the end of this year, early next year, but I'm hoping that it does happen because I, I think, you know, swift justice is, is full justice. Sure has pleaded not guilty to the charge of second degree murder and his attorney has told News 8 that he believes the case will prevail in his favor. I don't. I don't think they are going to be successful in proving that, uh, that this guy committed murder. I don't know. I just have a, a, that's just, I mean, I don't know anything, but I just have a suspicion that this, that they're going to fail in trying to convict him of that. That sounds like an uphill battle. Um, but, uh, whatever they made the decision. So we shall see. I, I'm, I'm very anxious to walk, to watch this case as it unfolds, but yeah, I don't know. Ben's kind of a, fucking lawyer what do you expect okay patreon patreon.com slash eric zane it's where we uh do another podcast uh when this one is done and by the way today's gonna be a little bit weird because i actually have to wrap this show up today's free podcast up about 10 minutes early 10 15 minutes early um because i've got an obligation at uh, 10 30 and uh i gotta get to it i actually have to be somewhere which is rare but um and then the patreon will happen after that so i'm guessing somewhere between noon and one maybe even after one i don't know but uh f uh fyi patreon.com slash eric saying so if you like this free podcast all right and you're like you know i can listen to this this is good i can handle it the patreon is more of that with no commercials all right. Well, that's part of it. The bonus podcast Monday through Friday. That's what happens on the bonus podcast. P A T R E O N patreon.com slash Eric Zane. I also have several other bits of content that go up there, including the lost Zane recordings, smarter than a former drug dealer trivia, the insane asylum, um, the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, which happens tonight at 7 PM. I tell you what, talk about uh, interaction. I know that uh, some of you, um, uh, I, I say it with tongue firmly planted in cheek, are are very hurt that I am not uh, <laughs> referencing the comments, and uh, that is where we can communicate because it's a little bit of a different scenario there where you're actually live on the show with me. So that's where you're going to have to get your fill of me talking to you if. If apparently that is the deal breaker, I actually think that for some audience members, um, getting back to what I was talking about earlier, they are so, um, upset by me not directly talking to people one-on-one that despite years of being involved in the show and supporting the show, that this was the deal breaker, uh, and, and are, are really, really ruined by this. I mean, like that much affected because I'm not like talking to people one-on-one. And um, so I have to deal with that. The Ben and Eric Patreon podcast hopefully will alleviate that. But uh, if you ever want to be part of Patreon, you go to got to go to patreon.com slash Eric Zane. P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. I, re- I suggest just trying it out for one month. 
Five or ten bucks a month. Five bucks is all the audio. Ten bucks a month is all the audio, all the video, all the live streams. And try it out for one month. If you like it, you can let it ride each month or convert it to a yearly. And I'll knock 10% off the cost. Okay? That's how we do it. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. All right. While I'm at it, Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. I had a wonderful conversation with one of my favorite people on the planet. That would be uh, Megan from Irvine's. Uh, Let's see. She sent me a whole bunch of stuff, and I don't have it in front of me. I should probably. God dang it. Irvine's. No. You know what, Megan? I'm just going to call you. It's easier. And besides, everybody loves you. Unless you're busy. If you're busy, well, then just let it go. Oops. Hi, Megan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Sorry to bother you. You're not bothering me at all. I was podcasting, and I remember you sent me an email, and I, yes. I, I, I don't know what the hell's going on. I, I, I lost it. I mean, I have it. It's just I can't get to it right this second because I'm podcasting. But sure. I, I mentioned that we have the car show coming up uh, in yes. August, at the end of August. There was, also, there was also some other things that you wanted me to talk about. What, what, what did you want me to talk about again? Okay, so car show is August 25, and you're going to be here. Yes. And... Casa of Kent County will be here with us, and we are raising money and awareness for them. They are um, and they are a child advocacy organization in Kent County for uh, uh, underprivileged abused children. Yes, so and they're an amazing organization, and that is uh, where Irvine's heart is. And sorry, I'm outside, and you can hear no, it the sounds fine. Noise sounds fine. Um, so um, Casa is a court appointed special advocates, and they actually the volunteers the special advocates work one-on-one with the kids who are going through um the court system with um different uh court uh they could be going through different court uh sorry my brain i'm I'm losing words but they're going through the court system and they have an advocate with them making sure that their needs are being met so right Right. Oh, what we are doing is having people drop off different things to us, backpacks, just kind of like we did with those overnight bags a few years ago, um, backpacks, gift cards, um, blankets mm-hmm. yep, yep, to yep. make sure that their advocates can can take them out, make sure they're taken care of and that their needs are all being met. That's um, excellent. And they just kind of speak up for their, for their needs um, and just make sure that their needs are being met. So these are moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas who are stepping in for the needs of kids anyways so yes those things are those things are happening with the car show um construction is going is going well things are happening here we're waiting on garage doors and hopefully we'll all be back in one building soon um what else yeah. did we talk about i don't that, that I, don't, I don't know I, <laughs> there's i know you sent me an email i'm going to try to find it as we speak but i think my email said i'm a spaz i think that was the title of the email okay so, so search it's, for spaz it's that because one. i feel like that's what it was okay i see it <laughs> all right there i got it all right you are the best uh, and you know what hey, hey tell your mom and dad i said hi okay I will. I miss you. I miss seeing you. I miss talking to you. Things I, have been absolutely nuts. They have been bonkers. I know it. I know it. It's been crazy. <laughs> all right. So, yes. Well, I hope uh, to see you guys all soon. Yep, absolutely. I appreciate you, okay? Absolutely. We'll talk soon. Megan is absolutely the best. Uh, if you need your car repaired, go to Irvines.com, uh, servicing all makes and models, uh, except Volkswagens. Foreign or domestic, Irvines.com, E-R, Vines. All right. All right. A word for FitBod, which is an app that is going to help you get in shape, stay in shape, help you to live longer, avoid injury, be more durable, 
and just overall improve your quality of life and your health. Believe me, I know what it's like to start and stop exercise programs. The FitBod app, though, is helping me stay motivated. There's no question that my overall strength being improved because of the FitBod app is going to help me destroy Mike Ball in the Grand Rapids Half Marathon coming up in October. At the end of this, I'm going to tell you how to take advantage of the FitBod app. After you download the FitBot app and you put your information about your age, your weight, your fitness goals, things like that, it's going to tailor specific workouts for each of your body parts for each days of the week. It's a fantastic way to track what you're doing and stay on top of it and keep you motivated. That's what I love so much about this. Basically, they take the guesswork out of what you're supposed to be doing. Gone are the days when you just march into the gym and start slinging around weights and hope that something works out. What's going to happen to you there is you're going to lose motivation because you're not going to see any results or worse you're going to get hurt tapping into the fitbot app is going to help you achieve your goals and trust me after you start seeing the results of all the hard work you're putting in you're going to stay motivated that's the key and with fitbot guiding you every step of the way that's going to happen sooner rather than later it's time to quit talking and finally start doing something hey i'm right there with you i've eaten myself out of shape and i'd like to get back into shape the fitbot app is going to help me do that let's get motivated and do it together you can build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with fitbot and how about this you get 25 percent off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash Zane. So let me say that all again, okay? You go to fitbod.me slash Zane, and you can try the app for free. You can also get 25% off of your subscription when you do that. fitbod.me slash Zane. 25% off when you sign up today at fitbod.me slash Zane. Zane. Can you hum along to every 80s pop melody? Do you still know the lyrics to all the 90s hip hop tracks? Well, it's time to put your music knowledge to the test with Song Quiz, the number one music quiz game on Alexa. You can play alone against random opponents or together with friends and family. Choose from a wide range of playlists and genres from the 1960s until now to see just how deep your knowledge goes. Just say Alexa, play Song Quiz. That's Alexa, play Song Quiz. Excellent on them. Every year they have a charity that they uh, that they partner with. So Casa is this year's charity. Um, if you are looking for a new or certified pre-owned car, you go to sarahhonda.com. S-E-R-R-A. Sarah Honda Granville.com. Great place for a new or certified pre-owned car. Shop online, Sarah Honda Granville. Okay. If your kid is, you know, uh, massacred in the Uvalde shooting. How would you feel if some politician said, yep, it's God's plan? Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't know who the asshole was who came up with God's plan with that piece of terminology. I would love to get the background behind it's God's plan. Who was the first dick who said it's God's plan? I hate the term it's God's plan. How does anyone know about the plan? Where, where, what's the history? Who was the first asshole that said that? You know, because the world these days is kind of like everybody's just ripping off everybody else's words and trying to seem poignant and smart at a time when probably you shouldn't say anything, okay? Uh, Trying to be comforting or or do the right thing and, and some dumb dick decided to say yeah well that's uh it's god's plan he fucking the fuck it is you can only say god's plan when something nice happens like when you buy a puppy this was god's plan all right the the whole business about kidney donation i've i've said 
I've said on this show that I heard a voice say to me, do my will. I believe that. that that's what happened. You see, that's God's plan. But you can't say God's plan when a dude comes in and shoots a bunch of kids. The attorney general for the state of Texas said it's God's plan. I would have to resist uh, not, I would have to resist going to the attorney general's office and actually doing my own mass shooting if some asshole announces to the world that the death of these kids is God's plan. The attorney general in question is Ken Paxton. Yeah, fuck this guy. Check it out. It might give a little comfort. This is from some podcast, just audio. Look, I, I think it's, it, it's difficult to give comfort. If I, if I lost one of my children, I'd be pretty devastated, uh, especially in, in, in... So the host is asking Paxton, and Paxton is the phone voice, can you give us some words of comfort? might give a little comfort look i, I think it's it, it's difficult to give comfort if I, if I lost one of my children i'd be pretty devastated uh, especially in, in, a, in a way that is so senseless and you know seemingly has no purpose uh, I, I think i would say, it, i would just have to if they, if, he's doing good right now if i had the opportunity to talk to people i'd have to say look there's always a plan i believe god always has a plan um, life is short no matter what it is. And certainly we, we're not going to make sense of, you know, a young child being shot uh, and killed way before their life expectancy. Um, and so even though we can't make sense of it, I would just have to encourage them to hold on to their faith and to hold on to their belief. I believe God always has a plan. Life is short no matter what it is. So, It isn't quite what it seems. He didn't like say, well, this was God's plan. And then just kind of cheekily dodge it with, with that one. Thank God. But I don't know, man. I think, I think there needs to be an effort in the world to eliminate the terms, the term, this is, or part of God's plan or God's blueprint or God's, this is a God thing. It, 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 no, it's not. Uh, so that it wasn't nearly as damaging as I thought that that was going to be. Uh, this article says Uvalde school massacre was God's plan. Eh, it wasn't quite like that, but I still think that anything involving life is short. It's God's plan is probably not that great. Might want to avoid that. All right. Uh, This, though, is uh, not taken out of context. Oh, shit. I don't have it. Oh, no. Hang on. (gasps) All right. This is where I'm struggling. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, my God. Aha! Oh, shit. What an absolute freak accident here. Check this out. Mike Trout of the Angels swings. The uh, bat breaks. And the uh, uh, busted end of the bat hits the umpire right in the face. Now, Now that... That still shot right there is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. It actually looks like the bat is buried in his eye. It just missed going directly into the guy's head. Wow. This is the video from that moment. Holy crap. Okay, hold on. Let me back this up. It's a little grainy to start. You ever you ever do that? You start watching a video and it's grainy at the start. That's that that, that that's what's happening here. But they will show a uh, replay. Broken bat, 
Flair. Trouble. And it drops. It drops. And it gives the Angels a chance. Home plate umpire is down. And that bat broke. Scary situation. Nate Tomlinson is down. Oh, my God. Everybody's looking. They're gathering around to see if... Oh, shit. Great. What the fuck just happened? Everybody's gathering around seeing if they can see optic nerve with an eye dangling from it. Watch this. All right. Bat now cracked. It swings around. Bat broken. Here you go. Oh, oh no. Oh boy. Well, you can see Trout's reaction too. Right back off the mask. Holy shit. Now, at this point, I'm thinking that, you know, he's bleeding profusely. Incredible tonight behind the plate. Hopefully he's okay. So make sure that part of that bat didn't you know, look like it got through the opening in the mask. Holy shit. A little bit of blood. No big deal. I think he's okay. That's always yeah. So he went to the hospital, but... It was, uh, it, it kind of missed, uh, missed eye meat. So I guess that guy's okay. But Jesus. Three minute trout look on concern for. Of all the things, because, you know, the, the mask that the, um, that the umps use, it has the, um, the, there's like a little opening there for their, for their eyes so they can see. But my God, can you imagine that? <laughs> my, it's terrible. Absolutely awful. Uh, all right. It is time to uh, welcome in Kyle from Dumpster Divers. I think he's here. Um, all right. Where is Kyle? Admit. Come on in. Fuck. <laughs> Hey. Hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, I can. Hey, we can hear you. Hello. Yeah. Hey. Oh man, my. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh shit! I can. Oh man, hold on. <laughs> My uh, my headphones are just not hearing you, dude. Did you? Uh, you sound like oh shit! <laughs> you blowing in it like an Atari oh, game? Oh, dude! <laughs> the head. I think the headphones are busted, dude. Uh, is it maybe something that, that you're doing something wrong? Like, or you might have to you might have to call my ass, dude. <laughs> Hang on. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> Hello? Hey. Dude, I don't I, something weird's going on with the headphones, dude. Well, uh turn turn down your mic then. Turn down your microphone. Turn down the mic. It's on like respectable levels, dude. Like right. Usually works. Right, but if you're gonna use, are you gonna use the mic or the phone? Um, the, the mic. mic. Okay. Well, then uh, mute your phone so that I don't. All right. Um, well, then how will I hear you? Okay. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't mute my voice though. You see, the problem is. You're going to have to take it off speaker and hold it up to your ear. Okay. That's cool. Okay. Let me. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, dude, that was weird because like when I before you signed me in, uh-huh. I was like here. I think the headphones work, but when you like when you brought me in, then it started making this fucking terrible noise, dude. And then you sounded like the devil voice times ten. It was weird, dude. Oh shit! Hello, check check. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure check. what's going on with that. Did you um? Now, is are all the settings the way that they're supposed to be? Yeah, dude, I'm like I'm looking at it right now. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm not, well, I'm you not. know what? Well, we'll figure it out later. We'll figure it out. Yeah, later. we'll figure. It, we'll fucking figure it out later. <laughs> oh, God, the 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 whole thing of bringing you in and seeing you and hearing you go, "What the fuck, dude?" <laughs> yeah, dude. It, why does that happen every fucking time? I don't get it. Well. Dude. It seems like it's every fucking time, but we've actually done pretty well recently with this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Dude. I don't think any extra buttons are clicked. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it was maybe it's Zoom, dude. Let's blame Zoom. All right, fair enough. All right. So um you had a dumpster here at my house. I filled that bitch up, and then I find out after the fact that I'm not allowed to put tires in there. Yeah, dude, you gotta read that fucking agreement, dude. <laughs> I actually, when I was wheeling the tire into there, I went, "Uh uh-oh, this this might not be right. And I opened the email and read that thing. And, uh, and, and, hey, turn turn your phone volume down a little bit. Oh, you can still hear yourself? I can still hear me through the microphone. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Uh Um, It's fucking me up. How's that? Uh, Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm reading the agreement, and then I'm like, oh, it says tires are fine. Or I, there, there was no word about tires, and so I must have just glossed over it and not been reading it carefully. Yeah, it must have been glossed. Yeah, it, co- it covers in there the, the extra charges that the landfill charges for. Can you – so just bill me. Just bill me the 10 bucks. Oh, yeah, you're, you're good. I just, I just ran your car, dude. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect. Nice and easy. All right. So, uh, Kyle, what's going on in your world for another edition of Let's Kill with Kyle from Dumpster Divers, please? Dude, just a bunch of crazy shit. Actually, yesterday, this is here's a here's a funny little. Well, it's not funny. It's pretty regular, I'd say, um, for you. But for me, it was cool. Um, yesterday, um, my mom she uh, she comes over, you know, maybe like once a week, once every two weeks, and stays the old night ski so she can hang out with uh, Jameson and whatnot. And, um, so we, we went to Myers um, to, you know, just get some snacks. And I, I mostly mean like pints of ice cream. So we could eat ice cream that night. Um, but got a couple gross, you know, just, just for good mesh. And, um, <laughs> then on the way out, we walked out and guess who we saw, dude, Chris, Chris, who, uh, okay. I think, Oh, Chris, uh, audience member, Chris. Yeah, dude. Um, so yeah, but here's how it happened, right? Like I was just zoned out, you know what I mean? We were like leaving Myers and then, you know, there's the double doors of Myers, you know, like you got to walk in the first set and then walk in the second set. So we were about to walk out and he was in the middle of those two doors. And like, as I was kind of uh, scampering towards the door, I saw just like a sit, like a body, like suddenly change direction and start coming right towards me. <laughs> and like, I was just like kind of zoned, but like my, my natural instincts as a, as a human predator was like, I'm about to get attacked, dude. So I like quick, like looked up and, um, he was like, Kyle. And I was like, um, I was like, what the fuck's going on right now? And then like, I saw his face and I was like, Oh dude, it's Chris dude. And, um, so yeah, we, we chatted it up for a couple minutes. So but for a second there, I thought we were about to get attacked dude. Cause you know how the world is now. Like yeah. people getting shot in stores, dude. So I was like, I'm about to have to fight a dude. So let me ask you this. Have you seen Chris's face before? Well, I, I, from Facebook, I, I've seen it on Facebook before. So yeah, I, then once I saw him, then I knew it was him, but. Oh wow! Okay, so this is kind of like you know a taste of fame about a, a you know things to come for you now that you yeah. are your own podcaster. I mean, Jesus, here you are, entrepreneur with uh, delivering dumpsters to people. Holy shit! And uh, and people are recognizing you. Before too long, chicks are going to be offering you their underwear. <laughs> for sure, dude. Yeah, it's uh, it's definite. Oh, just just some fame for sure, dude. Uh, are you um, now? And, and you said that uh, Mrs. That uh, Blue was with you, right? 
No, my mom. Your mom. Your mom was so. Was she like? Uh, was she, did did you explain to her what was going on? Yeah, she didn't. Yeah, she was fucking confused for sure. But um, so uh, she, you know, at first she was like, "Oh, did you go to high school with them?" And I was like, "No, it's from the Eric Zane show." And then she was like, "Oh, yeah," because obviously they know that I do that, and I'm pretty sure they listen most of the time. Um. But yeah, so then I freaking uh, was explaining it, and she was like, "Oh, she's like people recognize you from there." I'm like, "Mom, I'm kind of a fucking big deal." No, I didn't say that. I would never say that. That's funny. That's awesome. Well, that's good. <clears throat> yes, yes. That's that's the start of it right there. Next thing you know, you'll have uh, your whole your your whole fan club will be you know doing stuff with you, and you know whatever. You're off and running. Good for you. Yeah, dude, I keep uh, every once in a while I check the old uh, the old red circle in terms of the Chibian show, and um, those downloads just keep happening, dude. And like, I mean, not that many, uh, you know what I mean? But I'm just like, whenever I see it, I'm like, hell yeah, I did. <laughs> Have you had a hundred? Have you hit one hundred? No, no, I'm less. I'm less than. I think I'm at like thirty overall. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, I only made like seven episodes, so that's for for now. That's an okay average for me. <laughs> okay, excellent. Well, um, if people want to get it, do, uh, what do they search for? The Chibian, C H I B I A N S. Yeah, the Chibian show, baby. Okay. The, the old, the old Facebook, the old YouTube. I'm, it's on Twitch too. It's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I'm getting pre- like Spotify is like my biggest in terms of downloads and stuff. Like they're coming on Spotify, dude. So I'm cool with that. Are you on Apple Podcast too? No, I try to sign up for it, but I don't like have an I don't have Apple shit. So then like I was trying to sign up and it was like put your Apple ID and I'm like, well fuck, dude, I don't got one. So oh. I think I'm fucked on that one. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> Who the fuck doesn't have an Apple ID? Are you an Android guy? Yeah, dude. Here's here's one thing about me oh, as a fuck. person. I don't get brainwashed by a marketing campaign, so you ain't going to fucking convince me that I need to spend $1,000 on a phone. Are you nuts, dude? Okay, well, how much is the Android? Oh, I get, I get mine for free, dude. How the hell do you do that? Well, here's the thing, Zane. Um, I did a little research back in the old day ski, and um, I signed up or back when... When Metro PCS was me- like just Metro PCS before they like joined with T-Mobile. Yeah. And so I went to one of those and I, I got like, it was like a free promotion to like get a free phone. So I did that. Then every so often I, I don't I'm not like crazy with the phone. So I didn't like break them or nothing. And then, you know, I'd have the phone for like two years or something. And then they'd be like, come in and get a new phone for free. So I just kept doing that. And then um that's what I do. Like I just, I'm like, I'm not gonna pay for it if I don't have to, baby. All right, that sounds like a plan. Of course, you have a shitty phone, but <laughs> no, this phone, <laughs> this phone's nice, dude. Actually, I did, I did get it. Fi- I had a broken screen for like three years, um, because I just didn't. It still worked, and I didn't want to get it fixed. And um, so I did get, I did get a new one just before the wedding. Um, and this sucker is nice, dude. All right, Kyle, what else is going on? I know you got a couple bangers that you want to get to. Oh, uh, dude, let me tell you that. Well, actually, let me ask you this question before I get into this banger because they're related. Uh, so you obviously met Tony right when he dropped it off. What yes. do you think of him? Tony was very kind. I enjoyed uh, – he did a great job. He 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 had – he uh, the, the, the standard that I expect from when you would drop off dumpsters, uh, he is uh, – he's right there, man. Yeah, dude, I told you, dude, Tony's fucking he's nice, dude. And uh, he, I don't know if he cracked a couple of jokes, but he's a funny dude, too. No, man, I kept it. Uh, we, we, He didn't. It was it was pretty short. You got to bring him to paintball. You got to bring yeah, him oh, yeah, and Emilio. I'm, I'm the 26th, dude. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm on it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start marketing within my organization for it. Yeah, say, hey, this is Dumpster Divers team building. We got to go play paintball with Eric Zane. Don't tell I do, I do like Don't tell them that you're free. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah, I like that. Yeah, but yeah, that okay, yeah, for sure. What 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 is what's the cost though? 35. 35. All right. Hell yeah. We're going to make it happen, Eric Zane. All right, good. 
All right, good. But let me tell. Okay, so here's my banger. Let me t- let me tell you this, Eric Zane. So you met Tony, and obviously from the when you commented on uh, that post I made for him, the guy's in shape. You know what I mean? The guy, he's strong and he exercises very regularly, right? Yep, it looks like it. Yeah. So two days ago, remember when it was like 300 degrees? Yes. So. Anyways, uh, me and Tony, so he was he was out driving the truck. I was in the office doing my thing, you know, booking them, booking them dumpies, booking them junk removals. But I had booked a junk removal um, just for like for this lady out in door. And uh, she sent me some pictures and I don't know what happened, dude. I don't know like what kind of camera she was taking these pictures with, but the dimensions in real life were different than the dimensions in the picture. So when we got there, it was just, it was going to be more work than I expected. Right. And so in the backyard, like by like the back fence. So like quite a walk, you know what I mean? From where we in the driveway where we had the dumpster and dude, we had to walk. I mean, we were there for probably like an hour and a half, two hours, maybe just walking, dude, we were going to die, dude. Like Eric saying, we were circling the drain of death, dude. <laughs> um, Tony, who was like, so he, um, like I mentioned, he's a physical trainer or a personal trainer, whatever you call it. Um, but he does his workouts inside, of course, at uh, Planet Fitness. Yeah. And that he, that he was something else. Tony, he was looking at me like he was going to die, dude. I'm like, dude, Tony, uh, yeah, well, take what, some drinks, dude. What? Spick it on the side of the house. So we, we, you know, we were turning on the water and dousing our heads and stuff. But I got concerned, dude. I'm like, Tony's going to fucking die, dude. Yeah, you know, and that's, that, that's no joke. Um, and and I, I, this is going to sound weird, but maybe you can help me with this. Do people who are black, do they feel more heat than, than you and I because our skin is light? <laughs> because they always seem I, – I, I wonder that. I was like, God, it, it, I mean, I guess they, they wouldn't have anything to compare it to because they're not white, but I, it, it doesn't black absorb more light or heat than, than white? I mean, so the, the, <laughs> the funny thing about you asking that question is, is – it, we've come full circle on me talking about the plants growing on the moon or in the moon dust. <laughs> Cause I feel like that is a similar type of question. Um, I don't know, dude, I, I do kind of want to ask him, but also, um, I don't know if the skin works the same. You know what I mean? I, well, I, I know I don't know, but all I know is that if I took, if I go outside and I wear light colored clothing, I'm not as hot than when if I wear like dark colored clothing, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, you you're making me curious. Like you make me want to ask, but also like I don't know if that's one of those questions that you ask and then just ruin a friendship. You know what I mean? Do black? Wait a minute. Here, here's the question. yeah. Google it, dude. Are black people affected by the sun more? Darker skin tones have more melanin than lighter ones, meaning they're actually better. <laughs> they're better protected from the sun. But melanin... Better protected. Would you shut up for a second? Melanin <laughs> melanin isn't immune to all UV rays, so there's still some risk. So, um, wait a minute. How does sun exposure... Uh, it doesn't really say. It just says it's. It can also be affected. True. Sure. Yeah, I, I. I don't know if if this is a good idea to try to track this down right now. I. 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 I what I. Yeah. <laughs> we need one of those audience members to do one of those sick ass Google searches and just help us, baby. No, no, no. Because I just spent part of the show explaining that. I can't. I don't want to acknowledge their comments anymore. Which turn it down. No. Turn turn the devil voice down. Oh oh shit. <laughs> no. Um. You know, My bad. I forgot it was still on. No, I, I don't mean to make it sound like I was being a dick, but I I got I got to a point with comments that doing the show, I am conscientiously not reading the comments anymore, and not because I don't like anyone. Um, though it, I think it was received that way. I, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it distracts and I can't really focus on actually doing the show. Does that make sense? 
Oh yeah, for sure. I, I get it, dude. Um, that's what I finally figured out. Um, on restream, I like randomly started getting comments coming through, and I get it, dude. Because then you start reading them, and you just start talking about whatever these people are talking about. I get it. Right. So if you if you want to focus on the convert, like if I'm having a conversation with you, and then I suddenly get distracted, um, to the to most audience, because ninety nine percent of the people who get my show get it when it's not live. And yeah, so yep. to them thinking about them, it, it is uh, difficult for them to listen to that type of awkward uh, engagement, though it's fun for the individual and it can, it does occasionally result in some good content, but it's uh, that old saying, the juice is not worth the squeeze and I can't, I just can't do it anymore. So I'm in this, weirdo state right now where people are coming to grips with this. And I honestly, I think that some of my audience members are so unbelievably upset by this that they <laughs> might actually quit the show. And so I'm like, Ugh. Oh, shit. I, 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 I'm so I'm trying to be respectful of that while not, you know, um, cause typically what I do is I usually just tell people to fuck off but I'm not, uh, I don't want to do that in this case because I mean, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like fighting about it, but dude, remember, um, I was going to ask you about this and then I fucking forgot because that's my MO dude. I just forget stuff. Um, but remember, uh, like a couple episodes back when, um, we started talking about those, those one or two, uh, audience members that said I sucked or whatever. And then remember you got like super fucking pissed. But then, like, after that, um, after I signed off and you went to take a piss, and then, like, something happened and you just ended the show early, what what, what, what fucking happened? Were you, like, uh, were you super pissed and it was just like, fuck it, I'm not doing the show today? Or uh, what? Well, I, I, the only, I, I'm not sure because um, I, I don't remember exactly because they kind of all run together. So uh-huh. I, I don't know what it was. Um, I, I, I don't think so. I think it might have been, hey, I just, I'm just not feeling it. You know, sometimes that, that does yeah. happen. I'm like, ah, you know what? I, I, I don't, I don't, this is fucked up. I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it was, I, I don't think it was any one thing in general. Um, th- though that, that has happened in the past where people have pissed me off. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm out of here. Fuck you. Which is very, very childish on my part to do that and very unprofessional to, to, to take a comment and then everybody, you know, uh, I, I basically just like take my ball and go home, which is extremely yeah. silly. You know I mean? Come on, grow up, Eric. But, uh, dude, you know. I think about that. I think about that because I mean, it hasn't quite, I only did seven episodes of the champion show, but like, I, I think about that. Cause it's like, what do you do? Cause when I used to do stand up comedy back in the fucking day, like, you know, every once in a while you do one of those shows where like the audience members is not your audience, like not the people that want to hear what you're saying. It can get fucking rough, dude. But you can't just like leave the stage, you know what I mean? You gotta Correct. fucking finish it. Correct. So I, I get it. Yes, you um you have to, you know, flush that, change direction, you know. Start whatever. Start doing something else amazing. What it doesn't matter, just as long as you're not doing that. Yeah, dude. I'm thinking right now, this one time I did a show out in Grand Haven for like all these rich whites and um, my show's not tailored to rich whites and it did not go well. <laughs> they were fucking like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Like, like, I think they wanted me to joke around about like, like 401k <laughs> like painting, painting your basement and shit like that. You know what I mean? So when you, okay when you're getting ready to go on stage, are you, a, is that a, is that part of the playbook? Do you think for a stand up where they assess where they are and maybe play oh, off of yeah. that? You probably should. Um, did I, I sure fucking didn't Eric's name. And I just fucking went up there and did what I was going to do. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, what, what else has caught your eye in the past week, Kyle, that you want to talk about? Maybe something from the news, maybe uh, something in your personal life. I, I really liked last week your your admission that you raged out on the family members 
after the uh, after Jameson burnt his little hand and you screamed at everybody and ruined the birthday party. That was one of my favorite stories that you've told. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm tr- now I'm trying to think of it. Anytime. I don't rage out too often. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's it's like a, that was like an anxiety rage. You know what I mean, where like I was just anxious that I fucking burnt Jameson's fingers. So I was like. <laughs> Oh, uh, like you know, sorts. But but I will say that the birthday party wasn't ruined because everything was nice and chill after that. But um, I'm trying to think of other times that I've I have raged. Um, I'm trying to think of various times in my life when I've raged. I did have one time. Actually, this is fucking funny now that I think of it because I'm older. You know how like okay, every we'll say every like five years on average, like you just like reach like the next point in your mental progression or like mental maturity, I guess you'd say. And then like, you just feel more like mature or older than you previously were. And we'll say that happens like every five years, it could be different or whatever. But so now when I think back on this, I love myself cause I was a fucking idiot. But at the time I was dead fucking serious, but like surely after we graduated high school, maybe we're maybe like 19, maybe but um me and a bunch of my friends we'd all go to um you know um on 44th street between byron and burlingame are you familiar with that area yes you, so you know like that place it's become the sports exchange but it's by like like grand rapids first like that church and yep. there, was, there was like a bunch of basketball hoops there yeah so we, we would go there like at nights you know like 11 o'clock at night and fucking play basketball for like a couple hours and stuff Anyways, um, we were playing and like a bunch of my friends were just being like babies about stuff, like acting like we were still like 13 or 14 about stupid shit. And in my mind, I was like all like mature and old and stuff. And so like um, they were all they did something. I can't remember what it was, but dude, I flipped out. Like I took the basketball and like threw it at the fence and was like yelling at them. Oh, we're not little kids anymore, and like we need to fucking grow up and like all this stuff. And it was like really like, giving them the business. And, like got in my car and like drove off and stuff like that. But then like now when I think back on it, like I laugh at myself because it's like, dude, you were fucking like 19. You had you had no clue about anything you were talking about and had no clue about what the world was even like. Just put down on them about specifically basketball with teenagers. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? I'm glad you bring that up because there are probably only, you know, a handful of times you can count on one hand times that my reaction was actually warranted like something dev- <laughs> like actually was a terrible thing that happened that would warrant uh, an appropriate response. I would say 99 times out of 100, I am going to overreact on a scenario <laughs> that has, that has become so much my game plan that um, at 51 going on 52, very soon years old. Uh, it's like, that's just the way it is. It's not, it's not going to change ever. Um, I, I, there, there may be some degree of it happening less, I guess, but for the most part, <laughs> you can count on, uh, in a, in over the top eruption, uh, at any <laughs> given moment. I mean, it's fucking dangerous. I, you know, I mean, my God, I, I, I am right there with you, except I do it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, the older i've gotten and i might have mentioned this before but i'm very chill on average and then like um i'm also uh have become somewhat introspective over the years skis um where like so my dad my dad is he's the uh-huh. short-tempered one of the group and he, you guys you would probably understand him more than you'd understand me but he flips out like when shit happens all the time so then like when i get older i have that like in my blood so yeah. like it'll be like a na- i can feel it like bubbling up in my old in my mind and my body like like my body wants me to fucking flip out on some people or a situation but then like also i know that about myself so then like as i can feel it bubbling up then my brain like, oh dude don't yeah. don't do that you know what i mean be fucking yeah. chill about yeah. it. and then i'll have this i can i, I have this battle of energies um happening like near my thorax like in my body i can just feel like my brain and heart 
fucking fighting it out, dude. And then I just, you know, I, I actually, those times I stopped talking because I, okay. I can't think of anything to say. Hey, <laughs> I gotta cut you off. Your, uh, your internet sucks, dick. It's all chirpy, oh, derpy, no. and stupid. But I'm, I'm out of time anyway. Okay. I love you. I love you guys. Appreciate the time. Give dumpster divers a call and give us some money. All right. I'll talk to you. Thank you. All right, dude. Kyle from dumpster divers right there. Uh, Another amazing edition of Kyle. Let's kill with Kyle. (laughs) Hilarious. Love Kyle. Hope you do too. All right. Uh, where are we? Okay, before we move on, shout out to mypolicyshop.com. If you're self-employed, out of work, or you work uh, at a place that does not offer insurance, call buy and uh, reach out to buyinsurancehere.com. I should I'm fucking this up. Reach out to Frank the Tank Fuss at mypolicyshop.com. The scheduling website is buyinsurancehere.com. You can also reach out to him, call or text 616-914-4070. Mention me, and he can walk you through everything you need to know about getting your health care from healthcare.gov. Medicare in your future, you're getting set to turn 60, whatever it is, or maybe you already are, uh, call the Medicare Advantage Plan expert, Frank Foss, 616-914-4070 today. Berlin at uh, Berlin Raceway. There is an ARCA rake th- uh, race this weekend. Uh, you want to check that out. The tickets for this one, because it's the ARCA series, are uh, 20 bucks a pop. That's when you buy it online. Get your $20 ticket at berlinraceway.com. Everything else is free. Parking is free. You can bring a cooler in. Uh, with soft drinks and snacks, no glass, no booze, 15 and under, free. It's awesome. BerlinRaceway.com. Thank you to Kevin Corbett. He tried to get me uh, an interview with one of the ARCA drivers, and I think that that, um, that may have fallen through, so sorry about that, buddy. Anyway, BerlinRaceway.com. Kent County Health Department. If you are in need of immunizations, an HIV test, or uh, anything involving the WIC program in Kent County, go to accesskent.com slash health. WIC, immunizations, measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, pertussis, meningitis, uh, cervical cancer vaccine, all important things. Immunizations, free if you're struggling. Personal health services as well. When you get to the website, accesskent.com slash health, you'll see a long list of things on the left-hand side. Uh, Just read those along, and then whatever you need from what I'm talking about here, you just click on it, and off you go. Thank you to the Kent County Health Department for uh, letting me talk about uh, their initiatives. Good group of people over there. Uh, Blue Frost IT, the managed IT service provider for the Eric Zane Show podcast. Love them so much. If uh, your company is getting ready to upgrade their tech, make sure you get a hold of Blue Frost IT. Blue Frost IT is their website. It's a hands-in website. And uh, not to mention their uh, email is info at bluefrostit.com or call them 616-285-50. Also, the managed IT service provider for the Eric Zane Show podcast. So thank you very much to them. We got comedy this weekend. Norm Nixon Jr. is uh, at the Full House Comedy Venues, two of them, uh, for shows starting tonight through Saturday, two shows each night in West Michigan, fullhousecomedy.com. Hi, Daisy. What's up? This dog has, um, when she wakes up in the morning, has some of, one of the grossest things in the world. I actually have to get paper towel. And wipe out eye crud. I mean, like, a lot of it. It's, like, alarming. I think it happens every year, but I can't remember. All right. Where was I? Fullhousecomedy.com. All right, a couple of cool things I want to get to. First of all, uh, in baseball, 
there is something known as an immaculate inning. An immaculate, immaculate inning is when the pitcher has three strikeouts of a ba- of the batters on nine pitches. So that's the absolute minimum. So it's kind of cool when something like that happens, when you get an immaculate inning. To think that the pitcher comes up there, throws the ball nine times, nine strikes, inning over. Very, very rare. Going into the game the other night, it had only happened 106 times in the, whatever, 120-year history of Major League Baseball. Luis Garcia did it. Here is a compilation, one minute and six second compilation of him doing just that. You can get things back on track here today, guys. Nathaniel Foul ball. The bunt against him to start the eternally restrain that one. Oh, Interesting yeah. windup. Another oh, foul ball. So he's 0-2. Both middle positions up up the middle. He can play Gets him. Gets him on the slider. Luis Garcia to get Nathaniel low. But switching position. Look at that windup. That's an interesting windup. But it's rare to switch. Yeah. To switch Called strike. Same position. Uh-huh. What about, you know, the difficult. Check swing. Got him. Playing all these our primary shortstops when they've come up through the minor leagues. So getting back to that. Gets him again on the off speed. Luis is just mowing down hitters. <laughs> Two strikeouts. Strikeouts. And now he's ahead of. Brad Miller is hitting and throwing strikes and picking up strikeouts. A three-pitch strikeout of low. All right. He's 0-2. This is it right here. This is where he gets it. Ah! (laughs) Yes! Okay. Now, that is fantastic. An immaculate inning. And everybody is stoked about it. Okay? Luis Garcia, immaculate inning. He's a reliever uh, as the game, the next inning comes in. There's a new pitcher for the Houston Astros, okay? The next inning, or I'm sorry, uh, not the next inning. That that uh, uh, that one was in the second inning. Fast forward to the uh, seventh inning. Um, Luis Garcia was the starter in that game, so he gets the immaculate inning. Then in the seventh inning, it happened again. This dude here, Phil Maton, is on the hill. And he gets another immaculate inning to the same three fucking guys that Luis Garcia got it on. So this is fucking insane. This is, this, this, uh, okay. If you're on a team and you have two pitchers during the course of the year get an immaculate inning, that's, very, very rare. Nestor Cortez of the Yankees did it earlier in the in the year for the Yanks in April. But if it didn't happen again all baseball season with all of the teams, that's very normal. It happens in the same fucking game for the same fucking team to the same fucking batters. What the fuck? That is something we haven't said in a while. As Maton gets a swinging strike on Nathaniel Lowe. The eighth inning on Monday night. Pitch two thirds of an inning allowed. Without- I like how as this is progressing, the announcers are being like, "Hey, it's 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 happening again." Allowing a walk, his 12th start of the season, and low goes down on three pitches. Mayton has started out the in- last Astros pitcher to accomplish that was Will Harris in 2019. It's incredible. Miles Michael is going all the way to the... So he's 0-2. Looking at the upper 120s, I believe, 128 or 129. Oh! <laughs> now he's got two. This is it. So now these guys are like, oh, wait a minute. Now that that, that pitch was... That was a fucking filthy pitch. Are you going to... A lot of these are swinging strikes or check swings that are... By the way, I think this announcer has a speech impediment. I keep getting the idea that he's sticking his tongue out... And not putting his tongue behind his teeth 
whenever he has an S word, the S throws an author. Too far. Oh, boy. Low and Duran now 0 and 1 on Brad Miller. 0 and 2. Oh, He's the fuck. Top step of the Astros dugout. He yes! did it. That was incredible. <laughs> I think there's another clip with more of the reaction from the uh from the uh He yes! did it. That was incredible. You've got to be kidding me. Two, two immaculate innings. Two of them. In one game. That has to be a new Major League mark. That could not have ever happened before. Luis no. Garcia just got matched by Mayton. Same three guys. Happens twice to the same three guys. That's unbelievable. That really is. Holy shit. <laughs> and, that, and that marks the first time uh, this baseball season that I've actually wanted to talk about a story in baseball. Usually, it's someone gets a bat in their eye or the game lasts uh, uh, 20 hours or something stupid happens. Oh, my God. That is awesome. Two immaculate innings in one game. Very, very rare. All right. Moving on. Uh, Hang on a second. I just thought I saw something. Kenny upset. He said, I, I can still see your comments. I just um I just can't really spend significant time talking about them because of the uh, distraction level. But I thought I saw an angry Tennessean um telling people to tell uh, I I gotta get to the bottom of this. Hey, hey buddy, how are you? Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. Can 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 you hear me? You hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. All right, cool. Uh, 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 Chris is like, stop. Don't interact with us. I'd love to. I want to interact with you. I, 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 I'm interacting with you like this. But um, I, uh, so Chris, shut up, first of all. <laughs> uh, Kenny, I, are you angry at someone? Uh, oh, you saw, no, just John. I, I don't care for uh, jizz, Mongo, Mingo, what the fuck ever. I, I fucking hate that guy. Why? Somebody, yeah, now wait a minute. It's in the boomer bunker, so. Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. I, it, 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 what, why are you, why are you, um, uh, uh, you, you, you hate someone? It sounds terrible. Why do I hate him? It's simple, man. He came into uh, fucking uh, the group messenger chat, which is kind of like a ghost town lately. Um, and also comments on your show in the past few months. I'm like, he never fucking talked to me at all, but he just insults me left and right. I'm oh, like, okay. He, fuck you then. You know, said, you're a piece of shit. You don't fucking know me. He said something bad that upset you. That's all he's ever done is okay. talk shit about now, me. As he, he didn't do it today, though, did he? No, but somebody's talking. Somebody mentioned that Boomer Bunker still interacts with their listeners, and uh, I like what Maureen said. She said... Boomer Bunker is not Eric Zane. And I put in like a clapping uh, emoji and and said, you know, I'm never going to fucking listen to them because of John. Oh, if he died okay. You got gotta... rid of him. I'd, I'd listen to yeah. Bob. Bob's right. cool as fuck. Well, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, I can't help <laughs> you there. I can't help you there. I, I, I'm sorry that you're experiencing that. I thought that you were like in a fight with someone in the room right now. No, it's just anytime, uh, anytime he gets mentioned, man, it just burns me up. Like, I, I just don't understand what his fucking problem is with me because he doesn't even fucking know me. And you know, I, he's hey, gonna come you know in what? here and, and call himself a zaniac. And I don't just talk think shit he about has me left and right. I no, don't think he you. has. I don't think he has a problem with you. I think he's just, you really? know, yeah. I don't. I don't. I, I'm gonna give him benefit of the doubt. He's probably just stirring the pot, trying to cause trouble. But I don't. I, no, whatever. I don't. Whatever. I don't. Whatever. I don't think it's. Uh, <laughs> I do not give one single fuck about him. I fucking hate that guy. Aw, right, come on Anything now. Anything he ever said was negative about me, and he doesn't even fucking know one thing about me. All right, all but right. No, I'm never let listening it go. to your hey, stupid fucking podcast. Listen to me. I don't want you getting all worked up. Don't let this bother you, Kenny. Okay. Man, I've had the shittiest fucking week, so it just it it's takes okay. very little right now. All right. Well, I'm not fucking with you. I am. <laughs> I am not gonna it's fuck not with you, you, man. It's not you. All right. Don't worry about Are it. you uh? Is there, a, is there anything I can help you with, Kenny? 
I don't know. I mean, shit. Well, I tell you, you what, you don't have time for me to get. You, you know, it's not worth it. You, Nobody cares hey, anyway. <laughs> you, you, yeah, that's bullshit. I'll call you later on. <laughs> well, I mean, I got a three-hour uh, meeting for work coming up, so. Oh God! Well, I'll call you. Wait a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're definitely gonna wait a while. All right, buddy. Hey, did you see my AC uh, ACDC video, River Plate? Yeah. How about yeah, that? Uh, uh, was that the Patreon yesterday? Yes, I, I, um, I, I, I love that crowd. South American concert crowds are the shit. Man, just concert crowds in general. Like it's been forever since I've been to a big show like that. It makes me think of like Ozfest back in like the early two thousands. Man, it's just been so long. I'm done. Yeah, but people like in again. South America are more attractive than gross Americans. <laughs> are they yes I they are know. i think so all right everybody's more attractive than me oh uh, come on now hey let me ask you this are you still walking i am trying to but i've had a really rough time with this new car i got and i've been installing speakers and a new system and all, all this stuff man it's it's been an ordeal but the thing is and this is not going to surprise anybody but I hurt my back. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, my back. Ow. Man, it is it is really got me like laid out like Oh my back. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's been it's been a rough week and a half and, and this car has turned into a fucking money pit. Oh just, my God. Oh buddy. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm thinking about you. I appreciate it, man. All right. Thank I'll you. See you later. Yep, yeah, see ya. Kenny, you still walking? Did you hear that? It was like a pause. He went, uh, Kenny, you still walking? <sighs> you could, I mean, it was right there. Well, <laughs> here's the problem. I'm installing speakers. Speaker installations getting in the way of my walk. The car won't run right because the speakers. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Get out of date to be confused, Eric Zane. <laughs> One more thing. What are you doing? There's the suggestion that perhaps Z Speed Mobile Mechanic can help you with your car woes. I just got back in there and I saw Chris's dumbass comment that. Bastard. Okay, see ya. <laughs> motherfucker. You motherfucker. <laughs> Ow. Oh, fucking shit, my back. Oh, man. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to be on uh, Big 101.3 at 10 a.m. I'm filling in for Allie Mack up until uh, Tuesday. So, Big 101.3 on the radio. And uh, I'll be back with the Patreon after I go to a an appointment that I have at 10.30. Oh, my God. I ran a half mile yesterday in three minutes and 29 seconds. That puts it at a, that's a 658 mile pace for that half. I think I could have done it at, because I think I had some something in the tank, but I kind of erred on the side of a uh, conservative. I think I could have gotten that thing done at about a 652 pace. Now, for a half mile repeats, I should be doing them to be able to meet beat Mike Ball at a 648 mile pace for the ha for a half mile. Well, I mean, that would be 324. So what would be right now, 329? I would have to do it at 324 for a half mile. 
I'm getting there. I'm getting there. For those workouts. That is to be on pace to be able to run an hour 38, I believe, is the number I had. An hour 38 or an hour 37, somewhere in that ballpark. So I'm getting more comfortable. I'm down 10. I am down 10 fucking pounds. And, uh, but not for long. If I keep going just before bedtime, murdering three enormous tacos. Oh God. And I even washed it down with a couple of handfuls of M&Ms. My God. Uh, I've got t-shirts, ericzaneshow.com. That's where you get those. I'm on Cameo, cameo cameo.com. You can hire me. Uh, I've got uh, a mortgage company, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. I've got A&E Heating and Cooling, 616-516-8579. All there for you. Please engage the sponsors. And as always, if you have a story that you want to share with me, I would love that. It helps me grow the show and uh, gives me fun things to talk about. On the Patreon, I've got a fat fuck brawl between two fat assholes that I have to show you. I've got mind melt number five. It's going to blow your mind. And a whole lot more. On the Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Advertise with me. If you're interested, send me an email in the shoreliner stripe and inbox, eric at ericzaneshow.com. Your asshole of the day today. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Aha. Uh. For killing Schimmel's chicken, it's Benny the One-Eyed Wonder Dog. That is bullshit. Benny the One-Eyed Wonder Dog is your asshole of the day. Brought to you by TC Paintball and JM Synthetics. Hey, I got to keep it real. He did do that, and that is not okay. As always, I uh, thank you for being part of this podcast and uh, watching it live and downloading the audio. Links in the show notes. So there you go. That's my time for today. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. You're finally at that hot new spot. The one your friends keep raving about. Sitting across from your date. It's going... Another round? Really well. And that dish you've been dying to try? Oh, it's headed your way. You can smell it. Hear it sizzling fresh off that skillet as it comes closer, closer... And served. Go ahead, enjoy. After your phone sneaks a bite first. When you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it. Target has laundry day covered because they offer a great selection of concentrated Tide Pods to help with all your laundry needs. Tide Pods clean, freshen, and help rejuvenate your clothes with odor fighters and stain removers. Did you know Tide Pods clean better than the leading liquid bargain detergent? Tide Pods are powerful enough to make your whites white and your brights bright, even in cold water. Just toss in one Tide Pod for small loads, two for medium, three for large. It's that easy. For great value and convenient pickup options, get Tide Pods today at Target.